welcome to Chairside Live. I'm Megan Strong. And I'm Will Schmidt, Registered Dental Assistant here at Gladwell Dental. Guess what's happening in today's show? I can't guess. Well, I'm going to tell you then. <laughs> Mr. Jim Gleibel is taking Dr. Howard Ferran, who you know from Dentaltown Magazine and Dentaltown.com, and he's taking him on a tour of the amazing facility where we fabricate our Bruxer Stellar Zirconia line of products as well as other materials and devices. Yeah, so we're getting a behind the scenes look exclusive at all of our in house technology and all of our award winning products. I say we get right to it, Megan. Let's take a look. Because of the way we do things here, as you can see, it's completely different than any other lab you'd ever walk into. It's all automated, it's got uh, uh, conveyors here that move cases. The now how many, case ca how many cases will come in on an average day? Oh, uh, probably uh, between all the buildings, 15,000 maybe. 15,000 packages a day? Yeah. That's right. So are yeah. you FedEx's best friend? Is that who this mostly they comes to? Bid over a million dollars a week at Federal Express. You spend a million a <clears> week <throat> with FedEx? Yeah, with FedEx, yeah. Almost everything you see here is gonna be our software. And that's one of the big things that's allowed us to grow. I mean, how do you control this many cases coming through a place? It looks like chaos. Completely organized. Completely organized. It, um, and I have very good people to do that. They don't rely on me for that. Yes. How many of, employees do you have out here? Uh, 5,000. 5,000. Uh -huh. 5,000. This, this is a Nikon scanner, and it scans that silicone impression or whatever impression we put in there, and then you would get but something that looks just it like this. Is through the box? Here. It could. Makes no, wow. But we don't do that. We're, right now we've wow. got it sitting on a tree. So if you watch it, there's an impression sent in by a customer, and they're going to take that now, and it takes 53 seconds over here, roughly, to scan an impression. They do here right today, they're running several hundred impressions every day. So now the door just opened, we heard that. So we got to stick two, two impressions in, and it's gonna pull two impressions out. This here is a, uh, we're standing on the back of it maybe? Yeah. It's gonna make a difference, go to front and back. Remember that big machine I showed you earlier, that $375,000 machine? This replaces that, and it's faster. This here is a computer tomography unit, big x-ray de developed, and it's gonna shoot through there and scan that silicone what, impression. What is that? That's a PVS scan. Can I move it? Yeah. Okay, so that's an, mm -hmm. an impression. Just an impression. So, so let me tell you when So I, I go directly from this to CAD to the machine. No plaster work, no pouring models, no die trimming. Okay, so you, you make 90,000 crowns a month. A week. a week and mm -hmm. track all your remakes. Mm -hmm. And what the young kids are trying to figure out when they get out of dental school is when do they need to switch from a quadrant tray to full upper and lower trays mounted on an articulator? Yeah, they, just to make sure that sometimes your occlusion will give you enough to art, interdigitate those things so that they know where the centric is. But sometimes you're missing teeth and they're floating around in the the subconscious in a person's mind, they know where their centric is, even though they have very few teeth in their mouth. But once you take them out, you don't have a subconscious to put those two pieces together, so then you need a full arch tray. So when, when, do you, when can you do quadrant, when can you do full edge? What would be the... Uh, I would do quadrant for anything. I'd, I wouldn't do a quadrant on a three unit bridge. So a three unit three bridge? Three unit, yeah. I, I would still try to do a full mouth impression on a three unit bridge, most of the time. Well, what, if, what if it was um, just two molar, the first and second molar, and there was mm -hmm. no wisdom tooth? Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that, was on a quadrant. You'd still do a quadrant mm -hmm. on that? Yeah, as long as they got the two buys in, in occlusion, you know. Again, I'm trying to help, you know, knowledge has mm -hmm. no value if we can't transfer mm -hmm. it to the kids. She's 25, mm -hmm. um, would you, um, would you, for faster, easier, higher quality, lower cost, better quality, should she start um, with an impression material or a scanner? You've got to have impression material because you can't scan everything. You're going to come across cases that scanning will not work, especially if you got a lot of tissue in there. Remember I said if you have a lot of tissue to remove, you're going to have to go in there and burn tissue, and that's not what you really want to try to do. But then silicone impression material will go in every little sulcus. You can't keep it out. Just pull it out and then you got it. Yeah. So this, if you can see all the little blocks over there, they are different shades. So all those racks shades? of zirconium. Shades. Those are Bruxer blocks. So then now these, these racks, will take them out, they'll pull them out, and um, then this, this little device will pick them up 
it'll go down through. And remember that machine I told you about that were, uh, it was, we we're making these industrial milling machines. That's what this is. This is industrial milling machines. Wow. So they're very much kind of like the ones you use in your office uh, for a chair side, but that's what this is doing. So it's going to mill those, and that robot comes through here, picks them up, and then, and this can do 2,200 units a day, this machine here. We'll do this, 2,200 this crowns a day. This area right here does 2,200 you crowns can do a day. 2,200 crowns a day. So back when you started, how many people would you have needed to do 2,200 crowns a day when you were waxing it up and casting them? 500. 500. I would think it's about right. So this Four is a 500 a person lab. Yeah. Holy moly. Never calls in sick. And does it go 24 hours a day? Yeah, you, you'd run this 24 hours a day. This would be lights out. You can turn it on at the weekend and keep it running. Well, so, what, what's happening here is by doing all this automation and taking two things happen. We get a predictable product all the time. So we're getting a reproducible product. Whereas if a, a technician made these, he's like a Michelangelo and he wants to put a few changes onto this. Not only is a technician very expensive, but he is wanting to put his own stamp of approval on this product here. I make this blank, I make the blanks myself from powder. And that's solid and zirconia. Solid zirconia. Bruxer. Bruxer. Bruxer zirconia. And then I make uh, these pellets to here that, that hold it on there so that it can go in and be held by the machine when it's being milled. And these are just for bridges? Uh, the long ones are for bridges. The short ones are, are these are the short but, ones. But Jim, See um, how short these are? Yeah. But I want, I, want, I want you to ask a, answer an economic question because um, this argument keeps replacing itself when the um, the, the the textile mills came out. Uh, it, I know it the caused question. a lot of unemployment. Yeah. Um, India canceled. Um, back when I was in college, they canceled a bunch of equipment from John Deere uh, because of unemployment. So Milton Friedman went over there and he said, "What's the deal?" And he says, "Well, I don't want to get a tractor when I have all these people that can do the job by hand." And Milton Friedman said, "Well, then take away their shovels and give them spoons." <laughs> yeah, something smaller, move the dirt. So, with. so well, this, but here's this the deal. Uh, is increases productivity, but it automation, replaces 500. So automation is that good or bad? displaces people. And we've become extremely automated over the past few years. And we've grown from 2,000 employees to 5,000 employees. Okay, so you repurpose your people. You have them doing jobs that are not just make work jobs. And they actually even make more money. So, my, my How average. How come you don't go back to waxing up the crowns while they're blindfolded. Yeah. Wouldn't that create more jobs? <laughs> You'd create a lot of jobs if we could do that. And that's good input. We're going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> when the units come out, they go through a system here, and when they come out the very end, they'll be placed in the little uh, boxes like this here. So that's the interiors that come out. That's what they look like in their oversized shape. Those are 21% oversized. They look kind of large to you, right? So yeah. that, that is a very large crown. But that's 21% oversized. Bruxer. Bruxer. And when it goes through the machine, uh, the, this is not solid zirconia yet. This is just a porous powder. And so it has to be shrunk down 21% to be the accurate size. So then what's different in so chair side milling Bruxer to do the whole thing in an hour and 15 minutes? Well, <clears throat> to mill, I can mill this crown here in 12 minutes because it's uh, 100, 100 megapascal. But when it's solid state zirconia, it's 1200 megapascal. So you have to use diamonds on it and you cut it slowly. And on some really small crowns, you can probably do them in 36, 38 minutes. But the bigger ones take 42 minutes. <coughs> but remember that for after 42 minutes, you don't do absolutely anything. You go directly into the mouth. And you would rather do this then invest five dollars in smiles direct club stock yeah i don't buy stock i'm not a, i don't know any stock at all by the way i don't know any stock do you do you see yourself ever doing an ipo for no i really don't because then that changes i would become obligated to the stockholders at that point and that would restrict how i make decisions because i would never want to risk i'll take risk with my own money but i don't want to take risk with their money so this thing here just see this here just popping boxes out like that. So the crown goes in here, an invoice goes with it, then this goes into an envelope, and it gets shipped out to a dentist with no models, 
and uh, it costs us very little money to ship this because it's in an envelope now. So that's that's to cut down the shipping cost and all that. And how many of these you make a day? Oh, we make about a thousand. One thousand? Yeah. And that's strictly for cool. he's got a bit of that's strictly for non-model uh, like iTero cases coming in. So I'm a thousand a day. These things here are what's called uh, EDM machines, electron depth depth machines. They they'll make super fine cuts into metal and all that. So we make parts here that you just can't make any other way. Uh, and you know, I tell you the truth, I don't know what all these parts are, but but if they want to drill a hole in something really finite, or like this kind of a milling in here, this these guys will burn them, burn things in. And these two machines are called EDM machines, and they they do things you can't do with a regular rotary mill. So what are they all making here? Is this all removable? This is removable over here, and uh, uh, the Itero stuff is all that in down there. And when you say Itero, that's just uh, well, yeah, Itero scans, scans yeah, for Crown and Branch. I got scans. Not, not clear liners. Right, no clear liners. We don't make any clear liners right at this time. Remember I said those machines that the partials really fit? Watch this laser burning here. So that's powdered metal and it's burning on top of the old metal. It's got some parts underneath it. It's adding metal on top of it. Now the table's going to drop 20 micron and a blade's going to go across it and pull powder in front of it. Okay. And then, so it'll be there in a second. And it's making, so that's laser cutting depth into it. Yeah, you're, they're cut, well, they're, they're, they're melting on top. There's 20 micron of metal being melted on top of that piece, okay? And the, the powder is in the air? Yeah, right. Now watch the wiper. You see the blade? Now watch it come across the top. You're looking at the top of the frames right there. Now you'll notice the frames are gonna disappear. It just put 20 micron, the table just dropped 20 micron, now the laser's on, it's going to make another pass. So it's building up metal 20 microns at a time. If you can see these, that's what they look like when they're being built up. Oh, wow. Isn't that amazing? And then what, and then what's the next step? Well, they'll cut them off, and they, they look hard to get off, they're not. They clean up in a hurry, uh, and cut off all those support legs underneath it, and they're very easy. They, they just kind of almost peel off. But then you end up with a frame that looks just kind of like that. Wow. And this is going to be for really a fits. removable it, it, partial? Yes, a removable partial, and it fits like crazy. And what is and what well. is the average uh, cost of a removable partial these days? I think they're two and a half, maybe 250 bucks. $250. dollars dollars you got to have the teeth on it and all that. You know, they're, so the, they're so, kind of so a pain to make. Would you say this extinct, the cast partial this framework, is a, no, where but you this wax is a, it up? Yeah, yeah, And exactly. take it off and yeah. cast it and try in it back fact, on? In fact, I have this view of it. I, I believe that to make a frame any other way than this method is, I can't do it anymore. Ethically, I can't do it because I know I'm sending out something that's wrong. We had to look at our remakes and we said, wait a second, a cast partial has twice as many remakes as a metal centered partial. How could I ever send another cast partial out the door knowing that the dentist and the patient have to suffer with that? I can't do it. Well, you look at, this is the future right here. This is one of the big, big, <laughs> things is changing dental technology and uh, it's, it's called SLS or selective laser centering so that's what and it'll make any parts you could make copings anything metal it could make it really could by the way it could print implants instead of having to mill all implants but fairly easy to mill implants but you could print them and they wow. would build them out yeah these these are cut zirconia and so that's what I, I make. I make these myself. So, so you make your own zirconium Yeah, like I'll make these things for four bucks, so I have to pay like 14 bucks. <coughs> and who, um, and what is that made of? Titanium? No, this is uh, carbide. That's a steel. Carbide. Carbide steel, yeah. Okay. Now, this whole area here, this is a training center. This here is where I send people come in here to learn how to do, uh, run the software and how to, she's learning over there how to run, make models and all that. So this is strictly a learning center. So we do all our own training. We don't look for anybody that knows anything. We only train. If they come here with experience, we don't care. We have to unlearn them almost, you know. So that's what this is all. So this is the, the you when you hire someone to work in the lab, this is uh -huh. where they go to school. This is where they would go you to school. You train them. And how yeah. long will they be here? How um, long is this? 
Uh, they'll probably be in here for six weeks. I would think people <coughs> stay in here about six weeks. We, um, we're designing, uh, in a new building, we're designing a restaurant. So these are renderings of a restaurant we're building over in one of the high rises over here. And it'll be built soon. We're building that out. But we do all of our own interior design right here. So you're building your own restaurant? We build everything ourselves. We do it all. We do our but own this dry is work. For employees or is this a um, commercial? This is, this is a commercial thing, but it's mainly for the one building over there where there's a lot of tenants in but it. But it's going to try to be a free, uh, a new business? It won't business, be free, but it'll, it's business? not a for profit business. I don't do for profit stuff really. But it, it would be a big bonus for the people in the building who don't have a restaurant right now and they can they don't have to go out somewhere at lunchtime, you know. So we try to make it convenient for them and if they like it enough then they'll next time they up the rent, <laughs> maybe they'll pay a little bit more on the rental too. So we you're to, you're building out the stuff for a laboratory? Uh, all my laboratory, everything's built right here. And how many laboratories Costa do you have? Costa Rica, well thirty ish. Thirty labs? But remember, eighty five percent of all my business is done right here in this this area. Right. But so these are automated CNC uh, machines too. When they cut something and you go to put it together, put the glue on it, it fits. You don't even, there's no adjusting, no, no tapping. You just put the glue on it and it goes. It's that amazing. And this, so this is the wood shop. There's like 15 people work full time here doing nothing but making cabinets for the company. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mr. Glidewell and Dr. Ferrand. Yes. And if you want more from this dynamic duo, in addition to this incredible uh, tour, you can head over to ChairsideLive.com where they've got a great two-part interview with some good nuggets of information. That's right. And then, on top of that, head over to GlidewellDental.com, click on the Education tab, and pick a nice free CE course to take. Yes. Well, what do you think? I recommend Dr. Chad Duplantis has a course right now on there, and it's, it's entitled In-Office Milling versus Lab Fabrication, Making Case Decisions. And I think it's got some good information that you don't want to miss. I don't want to miss it. I don't think you should. But for today, we're all wrapped up. So on behalf of everyone here at Glidewell Dental, thank you so much for watching. We'll meet you right back here next time.